I am asked almost every time when I'm speaking to students or other audiences, what kept you going? And my answer is that simple little four-letter word, hope. After the war, I never talked about the Holocaust because my parents kept silent. I think they were hoping that I was a child I don't remember or I'll forget. Scene one, take one. Woo! <laughs> he's pretty good, huh? Yes, he's all right. So are you going to ask me questions? Is yes. that what it is? So what's yes. going to happen is, Jason's going to ask you questions that you know the answers, because it's your story. <laughs> well, I remember the introduction of the wearing of the yellow star in Brussels in 1942, and seeing of course, signs going up in front of cinemas and parks that uh, Jews and dogs are not allowed. My mother and I walked hand in hand under the lush green trees decked out in their festive spring finery, white and pink blossom clusters that looked like miniature Christmas trees. It was a street I knew well, in a few weeks, the blossoms would drift to the sidewalk to create a soft pink carpet. I think that people who write have this feeling that they have to do something, they have to put something down. I, I had this feeling that I have to do it. When we teach about the Holocaust, the piece that becomes most meaningful is when we learn about the personal stories, the narratives that, yes, we know that millions of people died, but when you learn about each individual story, that's what resonates and sticks with you. And the memoirs from the Israeli Foundation are this incredible tool to bring those stories to our students. memoirs and their impact will go on for decades, for generations really, and I'm proud to be part of a program that is so deeply committed to preserving the memory of our own community. To start, I want to emphasize that for historians, this is an incredibly rare and important testimony, not only due to its content, but due to its form, uh, because we actually have three different forms of testimony from Molly. That year, 1944, everybody came. The believers, the atheists, the orthodox, the agnostics. When I think about Sabina, all I can see is her blonde braid with a ribbon in it. I cannot remember anything about her from before the war. J'ai écrit ce livre afin d'immortaliser cette tragédie qui a marqué nos vies et de commémorer mes parents qui étaient appréciés et respectés de beaucoup. The most dramatic event in my life happened in the summer of 1944. I was 16 years old, and I was facing my death. 